Hello students, Eric Magidson here. This is uh, part one of your lecture for Office 2016 and Windows 10. These are really basic essential co um, concepts. So right off the bat, I'm going to say, if you watch this portion of the video, send me an email that says Shelly Cashman, you know, CIS 120, Shelly Cashman, Microsoft Office 2016. I understand the material. And I'm going to award you 10 performance points. You know, I've, I've had a challenge. I have a challenge every term with students that make excuses for not getting material when it's really clear they're not consuming the material. So if you're watching this, pause it. Go ahead and send me that email. All right, so let's move on to the material. Now, uh, folks, a lot of you might find this material a little boring, especially if you've used Office and you're using Windows 10. Um, but it's important that you get this, and I guarantee you'll learn something that you didn't know if you continue through this video. Okay, so, um, you know, here's the objectives. Not going to go through those because we're going to cover those in detail. And the way I'm going to cover this is with demonstrations. Okay, so <coughs> Windows 10, <coughs> excuse me, not, not really feeling real well. Uh, Windows 10 is the newest version of Microsoft Windows as we know. Uh, they're now coming out with updates for it. The latest is the Creatives creators update. It is an operating system for the computer, just like Mac. Okay. It is used to run applications. One of the applications that it runs is the Microsoft Office suite. Now, the reason it's a suite is because we get word for word processing, Excel for spreadsheets, access for databases, PowerPoint for presentations. And the cool thing is a lot of the features and functionalities are exactly the same in all of them. So, you know, a scroll bar, horizontal and vertical that appears. If you're not familiar with the scroll bar, let me just bring up. So this is my personal computer here. Let's go into documents, double click to get in. Um, if you notice, here's a scroll bar. And the reason there's a scroll bar, of course, is because there's more material than can fit on the page. If, if I was to go to something, oh, I don't know, like my desktop and show the desktop, if you notice, now I can make this smaller, getting back the scroll bar, or if I make it large enough that all the content fits, notice the scroll bar goes away. More information, I can scroll left, right. A lot of mice, by the way, touch-sensitive mice now. I can use, um, use a wheel, for example. If I have a wheel mouse, you know, to go up and down if my my cursor's in here. And then a lot of them, uh, I have a little micro Logitech mouse that also if I swipe left to right, it'll do the left to right. So a few things to look at, you know, signing into account, you know, click the lock screen to display the sign in screen. You all have done this. We have Windows 10 all over the campus. So you're, you know, you're basically hitting that space bar now. You don't have to hit control alt delete anymore. You still can. Some of us that are familiar with that, you know, um, the cool thing is now they've increased the security. It used to cache your, if you lock the screen, it would cache your username. But now you have to put in both your username and your password each time, which of course is more secure. So here's the example. You know, notice here it's caching the username, in this case, SC series. Okay. Notice there's other users, other user icons that we can get into you'll notice when you're on campus that you're logging into a domain okay the ad domain and then of course your password okay <laughs> office 2016 includes a variety of applications let me briefly go through each one here now there are different versions of the office suite so you know there's the home and student version where you're going to get just minimal software i think it's word powerpoint and excel and outlook and then there's the professional version, and then there's an enterprise version. But basically, we know Word to be um, a word processing system, PowerPoint for presentations, Excel for spreadsheets, Access for database, Outlook is an email client. Publisher, okay, Publisher is like Word on steroids. It's a desktop publishing application. And as we've talked about previously, it is the one that would allow us to be very minute and create really high quality documents, usually for printing. OneNote is a note taking application. And then of course the suites, the Microsoft Office 365 or Microsoft Office Online and then OneDrive. Now, if you're not familiar with OneDrive, 
you know, if you look down here, I have a OneDrive account, okay, um, that is all set up for uh, for my COCC. So as you can see, in my OneDrive here, okay, my Central Oregon OneDrive, I have a bunch of folders for each class. So all of this content and material actually sits out on the cloud. The advantage of that, number one, it's not taking up space in my computer. Number two, I can access it from anywhere, including my phone, by the way. Okay, so OneDrive is wonderful. They're making some great um, additions to OneDrive currently that allow me to like share a folder or a file for five minutes, share it with someone forever, share it with them just so that they can read it, share it with them so that they can edit. Anyway, you get the idea. So Word, not going to go through this in much detail. We're going to be discussing these apps uh, in detail. And as we do this, this module, we're going to be hands-on. So this is the last lecture, official lecture that you're going to get. From here on out, it's training. It's not lecture. We're going to train you to use these, these applications. Word processing, you know, flyers, letters, memos, resumes. By the way, you know, even brochures, high quality brochures can be done in Word as well. You know, designed to simplify the production of documents, add visual appeal. Yes, we can do so much now with it. You know, to run an app using the start menu, which is right down here, you know, we can go here, we can go start. If you notice, we're on A, we can scroll down or I can use my mouse to scroll down now to find all the applications that are installed on my computer. And if you notice under W, you don't, you know, you do see Word. You see a direct link to the application. However, folks, I am going to show you the easiest way to get to any app, and that's to come down here and simply type in Word. Okay? And if you notice, if I type the starting, it gives me applications, best matches, recent files that I may have opened. Notice I opened these in Microsoft Word uh, as I was grading these. There's also an app called WordPad, but it gives me the most used here. Let me do the same thing for like Access. So if I type in Access, the database program, a desktop database, there's Access. All right. Now, you can also use Cortana to do that as well. I'm going to go ahead and pause this video. Uh, make sure Cortana is set up and show you how to use Cortana to do this. Now, I'm not sure it'll do it because I'm also recording. Uh, matter of fact, I don't even want to risk it. I'll just explain it. What you do is you click on this. Cortana would come up. It's listening to you, and you just say, open Microsoft Word, and it'll open the application for you. So wonderful ways now to get to applications. What we do when we open Word, we're just – we open Word. We're – Normally, it'll come here. We can start with a blank document. We have templates. We can search. If I'm looking for like a brochure, um, I can search for a brochure. It'll bring up thousands of online templates. I can find one that I want to use. Okay. Um, this is area is called the backstage area. I'm going to go ahead and click here. This is a new document. Now, the first thing I highly, highly suggest is going to File. Going to save as, picking where you want to save the document. Okay, so I'm going to save it to to my to this PC, for example. I'm going to double click because I happen to like using this old interface. I'll come up here. Let me go to my desktop, and then I'm going to name this document. Now, in this class, all the documents you create will start with your first initial last name. There it is. Boom, 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 and then like my first. Uh, Word document or document. Okay, so when I hit save, watch what happens. Notice now the file is saved. If you're using any of the student data templates that are given to you in the student data files, the first thing I would do is the same thing, file save as. That way you're not using the template. If you mess up, you need to go back. Well, you can do that and still have the template because you did the file save as first and foremost. Okay, do that with all of your documents. That way you know that that file is saved and ready to go. Okay. So as we talk about you know maximizing a window, you can see here I've pretty much maximized this window. I can restore down. I can make it smaller. I can bring it in. I can bring it up, etc. Now let me also show you a couple snap tools. If I 
left click. What I'm doing is left clicking and holding the left mouse button and I throw this up to the top. If you notice, it fills the whole screen. If I left click and drag it over to the left, it fills half the screen. If I left click and drag it to the right, a little harder to do because I have dual screens, it puts it there, okay? I can also, by the way, drag it up here to the corners and have four windows open, okay? So that gives you an idea of maximizing windows, minimizing windows. You know, if I minimize this down, it's here, okay, in my taskbar. All I have to do is click to open it. You can see here is my little recording that's going on. These are open applications. These, however, notice the difference with the lines. So these are open applications. This is my quick viewer, quick access, called my shortcuts, where I have these applications that I use a lot. So I use this application uh, here, this remote desktop application. I use, you know, full, um, file explorer, etc. Okay. So collapse, expand the ribbon, uh, use full screen. So let's look at the ribbon. I'm going to, this time, by the way, the ribbon is the ribbon, whether we're in Word, Excel, etc. This time, I'm going to open up Excel, and I'm going to open up a blank document. This area here is the ribbon. This is what has the majority of our features and functions. Now, our Home tab, this tends to have, for most users, they're going to use over 50% of the things on this home tab on a regular basis. That's why it's the home tab. But if you notice how much screen or real estates that the, the ribbon is taking up, if I'm going to do a lot of work within my document and not need the ribbon, all I have to do is come up to any tab and double click, 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 and the whole ribbon goes away. Now watch what happens. If I do need to use something, like let's say I type in, hello world. And I want to bold that, and I know under the Home tab is the bold. If I click the tab once and bold, watch what happens. It bolds. I click, oh, come on now. Don't make me a liar. Bold. There we go. And it bolds. And as I click off, the ribbon goes away. So notice I have more real estate for my document. Now, if you like the ribbon there, all I have to do, double click. The ribbon comes back. You see how my document has moved down? So we can do this with all of the office suites. So there you go. That's an example of the ribbon. Okay, we can hide, we can unhide. Yes, there's buttons up here to do it. I showed you another way. Microsoft loves to give us 10 ways to do the same thing. Use the shortcut menu to relocate the quick access toolbar. So the quick access toolbar is right up here. And if you notice, I can customize the quick access toolbar by adding features and functionalities that I use a lot in the access. Now, I don't tend to modify this much, okay? If you notice, it's got the save. I go in and save and save often. If I print a lot, I can put the quick print. See how the quick print is there? So now I can quick print. If you notice right now, my quick print is set to print to Adobe PDF, not to a printer. So these are things I can do. Plus, if you want, you can go into more commands. These are the current commands. All I have to do is grab a quick, add it over, and it's added. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remove that because this is my production. But if you notice, here are an extensive amount of commands, including, by the way, okay, uh, you know, arrows, fill colors, fonts, you name it. They can all go into this quick. But if you notice, they're down here in the ribbon. So I tend not to put a bunch of stuff into my quick launch. But there's the quick launch. Everything is customizable for what you want. We already went through this. Here's the quick print I added, for example. Uh, you know, type the desired text, you know, in in the document. So, you know, just the content, the enter key is the same as, say, a typewriter. Yeah, I'm that old, folks. Change document properties. So click file on the ribbon, open the backstage. Let's go back into Excel and we'll look at the properties for this. File is now backstage. So we're back behind the document. This is all the hidden information associated with the document. And these, by the way, are the properties. So as you can see, the size is not yet sized until I save it. I can give it a title. I can tag it. I can put categories. So for example, if this relates to a customer, 
I can put that in. Now, why is it important to fill these in? Because if I work for a company that has thousands of documents or I have hundreds, maybe thousands of documents on my computer, I can search by all of these properties. Notice I can show all properties. Now, let me show you all something. Related dates, I can look at when a document was last modified. So if I give you a template, it'll show me the date that I created the template and the date that you modified it. So I know when you're doing the homework, when it was last printed, and by the way, who made the changes. So in this case, I'm the author. If you're the last modified, you're going to show up down here. So I know that you were in the document. Yes, and to be truthful, this is also where I'll go to check. If I get two documents that look familiar, I'll go in here and make sure you're the one that edited it and not your friend. You get the idea. So back buttons, you know, print a document on the ribbon. There's the print. Pretty easy to find. Um, you know, I can go to file. I can print from backstage. That's how most people go. File, print. It's been there forever. Organizing files and folders. So tell you what, we're at 16 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and stop this video. I'll start a new one for part two. All right. Take care, folks.